Good morning. On behalf of the great West Virginia University and our university president, James Clements, and university provost, Michelle Wheatley, it is my happy pleasure to welcome you, our graduates, family, and friends, and my colleagues to the 144th commencement exercises for the Davis College of Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Design here at WVU. This is a great day. I would also like to welcome those viewing on the live webcast from wherever they are around the world. I am Dan Robus, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving as the Dean of the Davis College. And I would now like to welcome the Davis College graduates, welcomed by our faculty marshals, to please process and come forward.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of our national anthem as we are led by Sarah Nell. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Please be seated. I will now introduce the members of our platform party here to help lead and celebrate this great occasion and ask them each to rise as I have read their name. Dr. Michelle G. Wheatley, Provost of West Virginia University. Dr. John Campbell, Associate Provost for Information Technology and Chief Information Officer. Dr. Steve Robinson, University Registrar. Robert G. Jenkins, Brigadier General, U.S. Air Force, retired, who will be our commencement speaker today. Mr. H.R. Scott, President and Alumni Association, President of the Alumni Association of the Davis College. Dr. Denny Smith, Davis College Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Dr. Tim Phipps, Associate Dean for Research from Davis College. Dr. Paul Lewis, Assistant Dean for Outreach. Dr. Matt Wilson, Interim Division Director, Animal and Nutritional Sciences. Dr. Barbara McFall, Division Director, Design and Merchandising. Dr. Joseph McNeil, Division Director, Forestry and Natural Resources. Dr. Barton Baker, Division Director of Plant and Soil Sciences, Dr. Jerry Fletcher, Division Director, Resource Management. Thank you all for being here. I'm also finishing my freshman year here at WVU. On May 31st, I'll have completed a year here as Dean of the College, and it's been a fantastic year, and I thank you for that and for allowing me to do this work. I have a few comments I'd like to make before I introduce our commencement speaker. This is a fantastic event, and appropriately so. Look around you at all the colors and happy faces, at your friends and families, and contemplate for a moment just how far we've all come. For some of you, your freshman days were not long ago, as they are for me. And for some of our alums, your freshman days may have been decades ago. This great university was founded in 1867. Today, we're in 2013, and there are many, many more years to come. We have all come a long way. You graduates are part of a long and distinguished line of scholars and societal servants that have helped to lead our state, our nation, and indeed our world in many ways, from vocational agricultural classrooms to design studios, computer modeling and biology laboratories, great open landscapes, corporate boardrooms, farm fields, and much, much more. We, you, are the Davis College, the founding college of WVU.
This day as graduates, you take your place in acknowledging all those that have come before you in an unbroken line of 146 years. That is our shared history here at WVU and in all the many years to come. We are proud of you, graduates, and future generations will be proud of you as well. Enjoy this day and all of your days as you prepare yourself to commence to meet all of your next adventures and great responsibilities. Before I introduce our speaker today, who will share his own story of WVU, adventure, responsibility, service, and encouragement, I want to share with you a quote about education from the great former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Mandela is the iconic former president of South Africa, a statesman who led his country from despair, discrimination, and the brink of social disaster to the possibility of a positive shared future. He came from poverty and disenfranchisement, from farm fields and servant class, and he powered his way into an education, a life of determination, and a far-reaching and positive impact on his own people and indeed on this world of ours. He stands among the greats like Gandhi, King, Washington, and Lincoln. And here among you in this graduating class of 2013, there may yet be another to stand in that distinguished group. I ask you to please rise to that challenge. Use your education to raise yourself up to benefit others. In Mandela's 1994 autobiography called Long Walk to Freedom, he wrote the following, I quote, education is the great engine of personal development, and I would add societal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become head of a mine, that the child of farm workers can become the president of a great nation. He wrote, it is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given, that separates one person from another. Our speaker today is a person who has done exactly that. He is someone who has used his education in the broadest sense and in a pursuit of excellence to dream big and to achieve much. He returns here to WVU 46 years after standing where you are today. He will tell his story. He will engage you in his thinking and encourage you to think about what your own story will be. He will encourage you forward. He is a leader, a lifelong learner, a public servant, a person who is no doubt determined and courageous. And you can find inspiration in him and his story, whether you are the child of a farmer, or the daughter of a banker, or the grandchild of an immigrant, and whether you will pursue forestry, or agriculture, or design, or use your education here as a point of departure for another passion, whether it be politics, art, medicine, or aviation. There are many, many important things to be done. Please help me welcome forward why I tell you more about him, WVU Davis College alum and retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General Robert Jenkins. <laughs> General Jenkins began his journey on a farm in Madison County, Virginia, and studied animal science at Virginia Tech graduating with a bachelor's degree in 1964 and with a commission in the U.S. Air Force. He continued to pursue his passion for agriculture, first in India as part of a U.S. exchange program, and then here at WVU, completing a master's degree in animal science in 1967, and we are plenty proud of him for that. We're also proud of what he did next and grateful, using, in Mandela's words, his education as his great engine of personal development to pursue and thrive in a career in the U.S. military. Well, because while his interest in agriculture surely continued, and surely, as I know, persists today, he was soon flying planes and leading other Americans for our U.S. Air Force. And I have no doubt that from time to time, at military bases here and there around the world, over a cup of coffee or in a quiet moment, that he also shared his ideas and knowledge and passion about agriculture and where food comes from with his colleagues and friends that he looked down from the cockpit of his fighter planes on this beautiful earth and remarked to himself on the bounty and diversity that is ours below. Then he marveled at the extraordinary design of cities and farm fields below and the design of his aircraft itself. In the Air Force, he distinguished himself in many ways. He became not just a pilot, but an extraordinary pilot and an extraordinary leader. 
He flew U.S. Air Force fighter planes from the F-4 to the F-16, piloted 198 combat missions in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War, rose to the ranks and positions of leadership from second lieutenant to brigadier general, from pilot to squadron to wing commander, and he served in the U.S., located from the Pentagon to Hawaii and many places in between. Overseas in far from places like Vietnam, Korea, Germany, England, Thailand, and Iceland. He served with NATO forces and with the UK's Royal Air Force and completed a number of advanced degrees and courses with the US Air Force, the US Department of Defense, the Royal Air Force, and at the University of New Hampshire. General Jenkins has received numerous military honors, including among them the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal, and the Top Gun designation in the F-106. The general retired from the Air Force in 1997 and pursued a distinguished second career in business and government, first as president of an engineering, software, and marketing company, and the nine years with the Department of Energy in the senior executive service as the national director of aviation management. He received honors in that work as well from the U.S. Secretary of Energy and was named a meritorious executive and presented that by President Bush. Since retiring from civilian work in 2008, General Jenkins and his wife Nikki, who is here with us today, live in the Washington, D.C. area. They enjoy their children and their grandchildren and their home place farm in Madison County, Virginia, where his story begins. Please help me welcome General Jenkins to the podium and at the same time to recognize Mrs. Jenkins as well. Thank you, Dean Robeson, for that very kind introduction. Provost Wheatley, Dean Robeson, distinguished faculty, distinguished guest, graduates of the class of 2013, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor for me to be here with you today, a real walk down memory lane. What a wonderful day for West Virginia University and the Davis School of agricultural, natural resources, and design. And all of the people gathered here, the students, the parents, family, the faculty, and the friends, all of whom today are associated with this great university. Today, the candidates for graduation, I'm sure you look at this and it culminates the past four years or in some cases, maybe a few more than four years, of hard work, dedication, that has brought you to this point, to this great day that I'm sure you've anticipated for some time. The day that you receive your degree and your diploma. For the faculty, uh, for the families and the friends of the graduating individuals, I'm sure you feel a deep sense of pride as you see your loved one reach this important life's milestone. <clears throat> I know too that the faculty and the staff of the Davis College must be feeling a great sense of accomplishment today and in some cases maybe a wee bit of relief as you see your students, those that you have advised, you've taught, and you've mentored, receive their degrees for which you have labored very hard to help them earn. You may be wondering at this point why a retired Air Force general officer is addressing the graduates of the class of the, of the School of Agriculture, Natural Resources, and Design. Frankly, when I received a call asking me to be your graduation speaker, I was very surprised. However, as we discussed the topic to be addressed, it became a bit clearer. Please allow me to provide you some background. I'm going to tell you a story of my career, including how my career plan evolved in the hope that the lessons that I learned along the way will have application to all of you who are graduating here today. As you heard from my biography, I grew up on a livestock farm 
was very involved in 4-H club projects from grade school all the way through high school. I enjoyed working on the farm. I was very interested in the hows and the whys of, oper of the operation, what made things tick. I was very fortunate at that time that our county had really outstanding agricultural extension agents who worked closely with the farmers as well as the 4-H youth. We had great 4-H programs at that time. As a young person, <clears throat> I looked up to these agents. They were my role models. So it was somewhat natural when I graduated from high school, I planned to get a degree in animal science and become an, a county agricultural extension agent. In pursuit of that goal, off to Virginia Tech I went with a clear goal in mind. However, at Virginia Tech at that time, all physically qualified students had to be members of the Corps of Cadets. This admittedly was not what I would have chosen to do. However, it was the price, it was part of the price of attendance. I intended to put in my two years in the Cadet Corps and get out and be a civilian student for my final two years. But at the end of my second year, I liked the Corps a little bit better, so I decided to stay in. I'd also began to think about the possibilities of military service since in that era, we still had the draft system. And the word Vietnam had crept into the news. During my senior year, I participated in the Air Force ROTC flight indoctrination program where I received approximately 40 hours of, of uh, pilot training uh, in small single engine civilian aircraft. During my four years at Tech, I thoroughly enjoyed my academic experience there, particularly the courses in animal science and the agricultural related courses. This reaffirmed my plan for a career in agricultural extension. During my senior year, I was on the livestock judging team. And it was at this point that I met Dr. Bill Kidder from West Virginia University, who was the livestock judging team coach here. He casually mentioned to me that West Virginia, the uh, animal science department here at West Virginia was expanding its graduate school and he was interested in talking to me and or any of the other members of our team about the possibility of attending uh, graduate school here. Frankly, I'd not given graduate school much thought but I kind of warmed to the idea, even though I doubted very seriously that I could get a delay from entry into military service that would provide me enough time to complete the program. This notwithstanding, though, I was very interested. Upon graduation from Tech, I received my BS in animal science, and as you heard, uh, in was commissioned a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force with a contract to attend pilot training. At about this point, I was selected to participate in the International Farm Youth Exchange Program that some of you may be familiar with as a delegate to India. So I applied for, and I was granted a delay from entering the Air Force. This six-month program was my first experience outside of the United States and it introduced me to a world that I certainly had never known and it broadened my perspective on international relations. It also introduced me to the challenges of improving agricultural production in the developing world. My expo exposure to a very large U.S. Agency for International Development staff that was located there Tweak, uh, broaden my horizons a lot and tweak my interest for future career considerations, even though my primary career objective was still with the Agricultural Extension Service. Upon completion of the IFE program, I decided what seemed like at that time to be insurmountable odds to apply for graduate school here at West Virginia University and ask the Air Force 
for yet another uh, delay from active duty. And to make a, a long story short, I was accepted here at West Virginia, and the Air Force did, in fact, grant the delay. Thus began 20 months of very challenging, interesting, and rewarding work that led to my master's degree in animal reproductive physiology. Fortunately, the Department of Animal Science gave me a teaching assistantship for which I shall be forever grateful, and without which none of this would have been financially possible for me. While working for my, toward my degree, I served as Dr. Kidder's teaching assistant, where he gave me a whole lot of responsibility, and in particular, in teaching the livestock judging classes. This I enjoyed tremendously. The atmosphere then, as I know it is today, in the department's graduate school was highly professional and conducive to graduate students exerting exceptional efforts to excel in the classroom as well as in the research labs. The department staff was comprised of top-of-the-line individuals who were clearly, clearly dedicated to the development and the success of their students. In addition to Dr. Kidder, some of the names that, that, that you may recognize today that were here that I worked with and learned from are Dr. Keith Inskeep, Dr. Roy Butcher, Dr. Don Horvath, or maybe even Dr. George McLaren. I learned a great deal from these professors at, in, from the Animal Science Department, and a lot more than just academics. As I look back at my experience here, they taught us how to succeed in life no matter where your career path would take you. Several other names you'll recognize that I was associated with during that time. Dr. Paul Lewis, Dr. John Warren, who were fellow graduate students, and a young guy named Dr. Bob Daly, who was a promising young undergraduate at that time. <clears throat> Immediately prior to my final <coughs> semester at West Virginia University, the most important event of, of my life occurred. I married my sweetheart for my days at Virginia Tech a pretty and talented young lady named Nikki. I didn't know it then, but it didn't take me long to figure it out. This was the best and most important decision of my life. You see, she's been an important part of all of the successes that I've had and a joy and an inspiration to me for the past 46 years. By the end of my master's program, I'd refocused my career goals based on my experience right here at West Virginia University. At that point, I fully intended to pursue an additional degree and teach animal science on the college level. But first, I had to take care of my commitment to the Air Force. I finished my thesis, passed my oral examination in February of 1967, and signed in at undergraduate pilot training school at Moody Air Force Base, Georgia, less than a month later. Yeah, I know it sounds ancient, doesn't it? As it turned out, UPT was the toughest school I ever attended. Not only did you have to perform academically, you had to be physically and mentally prepared to fly and prove that you could do it on a daily basis. A typical day was usually one half day of academics, the other half flying, and many, many hours of study and preparation into the evening and early morning hours. My class started with 78 students. 52 of us graduated. You could be at the top of the class on Monday morning, and you could be gone by Friday. The pace was fast and furious, and the pressure and the stress level was enormous, and mistakes were not forgiven. 
It was here that I found that the work ethic and the skill that I had acquired over the time, both in undergraduate but particularly in graduate school, definitely helped me. Even though the academics from my degree program here and, the, and the, the academics from pilot training bore no resemblance whatsoever, the academic process and the basic skills needed were the same. Do the study and the hard work and good things happen. It was in pilot training that my career plans began to evolve again. During the last half of pilot training, we flew the T-38 Talon, a supersonic, high-performance jet trainer that, by the way, is still being used by the Air Force today. The first time I taxied it on the runway with my instructor pilot in the back seat, ran the engines up to 100% RPM, checked the gauges, released the brakes, began the takeoff roll, and then pushed the throttles fully forward into afterburner, I was hooked on flying. I had never felt power like that before. It was a real kick in the seat of the pants. I remember going home that night and having a conversation with Nikki about the possibility of adjusting our, our career plans once again. As I continued to fly the T-38, I le learned to love flying even more. And after graduating from the 52-week school and receiving my pilot's wings, I was fortunate to be assigned to, the F to fly the F-4 Phantom, the best fighter aircraft the Air Force had at that time. This further convinced us that an Air Force career was a distinct possibility. After a combat tour in Vietnam and an assignment to fly the F-106 for the Air Force Air Defense Command, we'd made a final decision to stay in the Air Force career for a career. I loved flying uh, the high-performance fighter aircraft, and we both loved the Air Force way of life. We enjoyed the people we were with in the squadrons and the wings and the camaraderie we found there. Our decision led to, as you've heard, a 30-year career in the Air Force. It involved 23 moves, living in 10 different states in the United States and six different countries overseas. Nikki presided over all of those moves, getting the household ready to be moved and then setting up the next residence. It was an enormous responsibility and a ton of work. She, in military terms, was our mover in chief. During the time I flew, during this, all of this time, the 30 years, I flew all of the, the frontline fighter aircraft that the Air Force had, including the F-15 Eagle, the F-16 Falcon, and the A-10 Warthog. I commanded a fighter squadron, two separate wings, and served three in three key senior leadership positions at higher headquarters. Folks, for an Air Force guy, it doesn't get any better than that. In spite of all the, all the moves and two family separations while I was on remote, unaccompanied tours, we, along with our son and our daughter, agree that we'd do it all over again. This was the greatest honor of my life, to serve this country doing a job I loved. After retiring from the Air Force, my aviation experience led me to a second career where I worked for the U.S. Department of, of Energy as the aviation, as the Director of Aviation Management. I was very fortunate to have a second career. That doesn't always happen. And I'm thankful to have remained in the aviation world for over 41 year working career. Why do I tell you all of the separate details of my career? Because there are lesson, lessons from it that apply to most college graduates as they begin the process of planning for and establishing a career. While I'd always encourage you to have a vision and a supporting plan for what you want to do with your life my experience clearly illustrates that career plans do not always come to fruition in the way you initially envisioned them. Remember 
the line from the movie Forrest Gump where Forrest says, Mama said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, the same can be said about careers. Frequently they evolve in ways that you cannot foresee in the beginning. Opportunities arise that are not predictable or anticipated, which leads me to an important point. I like to quote General Chappie James, a well-known Air Force four-star general who used to say, when the door of opportunity opens, step through it. Don't stand there and say, wait a minute, I've got to pack my bags. Obviously, you must be able to recognize an opportunity that fits your vision and your plan from something that is mistaken for an opportunity. Once I made the decision to stay in the Air Force for a career, I was faced with a number of decisions concerning opportunities. Perhaps the best illustration of that is early in my flying career, while flying the F-106 and having the time of my life, I received a call from the Air Defense he Command headquarters saying that I'd been selected for the Air Staff Training Program, and they needed to know if I'd accept the assignment. I had never heard of the program, but I listened intently to the explanation that was all involved. It was a highly selective assignment for young captains to serve for a year as a staff officer in the Pentagon, but it took them away from operational flying for that year. Trust me, no captain fighter pilot who's uh, serving in a much sought after flying assignment ever, ever wants to hear those words. However, it was made clear to me that I'd been selected from some pretty heavy competition and that this was probably a major career enhancing opportunity. As it turned out, I took the assignment and it proved to be the defining uh, uh, event that accelerated my career and allowed me to reach senior rank and leadership positions well ahead of my peers. In cases like this, you have to be confident that the education that you have received here at West Virginia has prepared you very well for making these types of decisions. And it has prepared you for whatever direction your career will take. As I pointed out earlier, while the subject matter of certain career paths can differ significantly from your academic training, the basic skills you have, have developed here while getting your degree will serve you well no matter where your career roadmap may lead you. Even though I did not ultimately pursue a, a career in animal science, please let me assure you that the successes that I had were a direct result of the training that I received right here at WVU. When thinking about your vision and your career plan, I encourage all of you to think big. Dream a little. Think about all the possibilities. Don't restrict yourself. Once you've done that, apply several important tests to your vision and your plan. The first test is does this lead me to do the things that I love to do, or at least that I enjoy somewhat? It's a well-established fact that people who love what they do are much more productive and in turn more successful. From my personal experience, I can assure you that when you get up in the morning and you can't wait to get to work, everything about your life tends to be better. The second test, and this is an important one too, can I make the kind of living that I expect to have from this career? Too many times I've heard speakers say, follow your dreams and forget about the money. Life just doesn't work that way. Individuals and families are much happier and more content and life is more fulfilling when there's enough money to pay all of the bills at the end of the month. And certainly research has shown that, domestic, uh, that money is a leading problem for domestic dis uh, 
disputes caused by too little, not too much. Therefore, the question you have to ask yourself is, can you, can, can you reach your financial expectations by following your vision and your plan? When you receive your degree, you will have received the key that will open many doors on the way to a successful career and a productive and a happy life. However, your degree does not guarantee success. That now remains in your hands and depends on your decisions and your actions from this point on. Those actions include working hard at whatever the task may be, giving it the extra effort that is above and beyond that which is normally expected. I can certify for sure that the harder you work, the luckier you get. It also includes the persistence to see your task through to a successful conclusion in spite of the speed bumps and the roadblocks that you are no doubt going to encounter along the way. This along with a positive attitude, a can-do attitude, goes a long way to assisting you no matter what the task may be. A can-do attitude is infectious. To the people around you, to the people in your organization, and it typically causes those folks, both your subordinates, your peers, and your superiors, to rally around you in support of your efforts. The most effective squadron and wing commanders that I ever worked for were some of the most positive people that I met. Squadron and wing members rallied behind them and were eager to do whatever it took to, to accomplish the mission and to make good things happen for the organization. You've heard the old cliche, I'm sure, there are three types of people. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who don't know what's happening. Your success depends on you making things happen on a consistent basis. There's no substitute for dedication and hard work, and results really count. When you receive your diploma, please remember, you didn't achieve this milestone by yourself. Many people have aided you along the way, including your grade school and your high school teachers who prepared you for college, your college advisors and professors who have directed, guided, and taught you, your parents, and your family who have supported you and who in many cases have sacrificed greatly to do so, <clears throat> and your friends and others who have been there for you throughout your college journey leading to this wonderful day. If you haven't done so already, thank them for the role that they have played which has led you to achieving this very important life's milestone. They'll appreciate it and you will have begun a very important practice that will serve you well throughout your life. Share the credit by giving credit where credit is due. <clears throat> if you don't remember but one thing I say to you today, please remember this. There's a well-known story about Winston Churchill, the great World War II Prime Minister of Great Britain, in his last college graduation address when he was in the final years of his life and in failing health. He was seated on the stage at the college commencement, appearing very weak, very frail, and when he was introduced, he arose and very slowly proceeded to the podium he stood there looking down, gripping the podium for an uncomfortably long time, and then he looked up at his audience and he said, never, never, never give up. So in closing today, I offer you some of the same advice. No matter what happens to you along the way on your life's journey, trust and believe in yourself and never, never, never give up. Congratulations, graduates. God bless.
Thank you, General Jenkins, for those excellent and encouraging words. They are indeed a charge to our graduates. They should consider them well, and we thank you all for your service. It is also fitting at this moment that we pause and recognize the service and selfless sacrifice of all who have served or will soon serve in our U.S. military, as General Jenkins has done. Today at our graduation, while our nation is still at war, for the first time in WVU history, we have added a new special honorary cord to be worn by our students serving the armed forces. These are red, white, and blue cords that they can wear proudly. The symbol acknowledges our appreciation for the cause of freedom they are committed to and the commitment they and their families make in this regard. Let me ask all of our students, friends, family, and faculty members who either have or still do serve in the U.S. military to rise so we can recognize and thank you. Please rise. West Virginia has indeed a great, a great history of military service, and we are very appreciative of that. I'd now on this special occasion like to present to our distinguished speaker, General Jenkins, one of these same red, white, and blue cords as a symbol of our enduring appreciation to his service and as a special way to link him to this graduating class of 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Sarah Nail, who will sing My Home Among the Hills, composed in 1963 in honor of West Virginia's centennial celebration by Clarksburg native E.W. James. Ms. Nail. Scarlet trees 
Thank you very much. Now we're to the good part, the conferring of degrees. May I ask Provost Wheatley to join me here in the front to help greet you and confer the degrees as you uh, come to the platform. Uh, Assistant Dean Paul Lewis and Professor Ken Blemings to take their place to assist with the presentation of the degrees and ask uh, other members of the platform party to help us form a happy line of handshakers as you come across the stage. I would ask the faculty marshal to bring the doctoral candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all doctoral candidates have been recognized. Siri Manasa Impaguta, PhD, Animal and Food Sciences. Title of the dissertation, Characterization of Coconut Oil in Conjugated Linoleic Acid Induced Lipolysis. Advisor, Dr. Kimberly Barnes. Nayakundi Mesheka, PhD, Natural Resource Economics. Title of the dissertation, Three Essays Investigating China's Coal Production Needs and Consumption Patterns. PhD advisor, Dr. Gerald Fletcher. Suresh K. Shoshesta. PhD, Forest Resource Sciences. Title of the dissertation, Predicting Hunting Behavior Using Theory of Planned Behavior and Constraint Integrated Theory of Planned Behavior Model. Advisor, Dr. Robert Burns. Ahadu T. Tekla. PhD, Natural Resource Economics. Advisor is Dr. Cheryl Brown, and she will be hooded by one of her committee members, Dr. Tessa geber -Benden. Title of the dissertation, An Empirical Analysis of Impact of the Physical Environment on Obesity and Physical Activity in Metropolitan Areas of the United States. Adi M. Tesfai, PhD, Animal and Food Sciences. Advisor, Dr. Yasu Kaczynski. Title of the dissertation, Effect of Electron Beam Radiation on Microbial Inactivation and Nutritional Quality of Food. Let's have a round of applause for all our PhD graduates. I would ask the faculty marshal to bring the master degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all master's candidates have been recognized. Alawaton, WC, Master of Nutritional and Food Science, Master of Advisor, Dr. Brett Kenny. K. 
Caitlin Mock, Master's of Science, Nutritional and Food Science, Master's Advisor, Dr. Janet Toe, will be hooded by Dr. Wilson. <laughs> Kelly N. D'Souza, Master's of Science, Reproductive Physiology, will be hooded by her advisor, Dr. Marlon Knights. Kevin J. Scheip, Masters of Science, Animal and Nutritional Sciences. Advisor, Dr. Joe Mortz, will we be hooded by Dr. Wilson, title of his thesis, The Effects of Pellet Dye Heat and Friction on Pellet Quality and Subsequent Lysine Utilization. Catherine M. McKinney, Masters of Science, Recreation, Parks and Tourism. Advisor, Dr. David Smaldone. <laughs> Michael Tincher, Masters of Science, Wildlife and Fishery Science, hooded by Dr. Joe McNeil. Claire E. Duran, Masters of Landscape Architecture. Advisor, Dr. Peter Butler. Colby D. Wyant, Masters of Science, Ag and Extension Educa Education. Will be hooded by her advisor, Dr. Deborah Boone. Cynthia Martell, Masters of Ag, Forestry, and Consumer Sciences, be hooded by her advisor, Dr. Denny Smith. Andrew K. Walker, Masters of Agriculture, Forestry, and Consumer Sciences, hooded by his advisor, Dr. Denny Smith. Eric Custer, Master of Science, hooded by his advisor, Dr. Eugene Felton. Mitch D. Wagner, Masters of Agriculture, Forestry, and Consumer Sciences, hooded by his advisor, Dr. Stacy Garden. Please join me in congratulating all our Master of Science students. I would ask the faculty marshal for the Division of Animal and Nutritional Sciences to bring the bachelor degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all candidates have been recognized.
Animal Nutritional Sciences has three program areas. The first one that we'll be working with is Animal Nutritional Sciences, Gina Marie Alt. Alexandra Michelle Bay, summa cum laude. John William Boney. Kayla Renee Campbell. Randy Rebecca Dove, magna cum laude. Miranda Joe Ferrari. Alexandra Ray Fox. Melissa Ann Gallagher. Brian Gregory Glover. Stephanie Grace Hamilton. Sierra Christian Hedrock, summa cum laude. Jeffrey Thomas Herman. Grace Ellen Honecker. Brittany Janine Hot. Heather Lynn Hoyt. Juliana Marie Pipes, magna cum laude. Daniel Travis Imperio. Whitney Rochelle Lambert, magna cum laude. Benjamin Jared Lloyd. Alexandra Ray Mills. Also receiving a, a degree in ag business. Magna cum laude. Emily Rebecca Orlikoff, magna cum laude. Joshua Payton Pennington, magna cum laude. Jennifer Helene Poe, cum laude. Ryan Keith Pauling, magna cum laude. Cameron Jordan Pretlow. Alana Pritz, cum laude. Kaylee Renee Purpura, 
summa cum laude. Kelsey Jean Shields. Johnny Ann Sims. Megan Elizabeth Sonnefeld. Andrea K. Steyer, also receiving a degree in Ag Business Management, magna cum laude. Brittany Nicole Safran, cum laude, also receiving a degree in Biochemistry. Joseph Leonard Tennant. Casey Morgan Tibolet. Jennifer Lynn Tonkin, cum laude. <laughs> Megan Rose Villers, summa cum laude. Casey Walls. Philip Levi Vice, summa cum laude. Chelsea Alexandra Wells, summa cum laude. Adam Charlton Eunice, summa cum laude. In biochemistry, Anne Marie Berry. Tyler Patrick Brown, magna cum laude. Joseph Evan Capito, summa cum laude. Lauren Clevenger. Dustin Steele Ellswick, magna cum laude. Jake Parker Engel, cum laude. Victor Greco, summa cum laude. George James Magnoni, magna cum laude. Dominic Eligio Nolfi. Anthony Joseph Romano. Valerie Dawn White, magna cum laude. Stanley Basil Wolf, summa cum laude. Now in human nutrition and foods. Nasser Jassem Amatrak, magna cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Barton, cum laude. Sophia Gautam 
Cesar. Lauren M. Gerchevsky, magna cum laude. Kelly Hamilton. Elizabeth Lynn Jarvis. Jenna Colleen Johnson. Uma Devi Kandasami. Teresa Marie Marshall, magna cum laude. Danielle Renee McCarthy. James Andrew McKinney. Brian Frank Mudrick. Maram Ahmed Murad. Amanda Marie Pratt. Amanda Joe Wilcox. Please join me in congratulating all our graduates from Animal Nutritional Sciences. I would ask the faculty marshal for the Division of Design and Merchandising to bring the bachelor degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all candidates have been recognized. Holly Nicole Bradleys. Design has several majors also. We're working with the design study students first. Catherine Louise Frontino. Tara Nicole Gaynor. Jillian Elise Heilman. Madison Elizabeth Morrison. In fashion design and merchandise, Emily Michelle Allwine. Jennifer Marie. Baird. Sarah Elizabeth Benford. Megan Lee Black. Shanna Lynn Brenneman. Allison Sarah Burns. Rachel Danielle Quezon.
Jesse Taylor Conboy. Samantha Lynn Cornaccio. Casey Dizelic, cum laude. Stephanie Carolyn Dobbin. Elizabeth Nicole Dunkel. Sarah Dyer. Brittany Ingle. Megan Elizabeth Griffin. Christina Guccione. Kristen Ann Hemp. Mindy Cole Hunter, magna cum laude. Lindsay Ray Kilmeyer. Beth Renee Kimberling. Andrea Marie Kostak. Jennifer Krimsky. Jennifer Whitney Levine. Kiara Maria Maimoni. Catherine. Virginia Marr. Amanda Nugent. Jillian Ray Polly. Kelsey Pennington. Krista Marie Perry. Allison Lee Rafalowski. Amanda. Diane Rush, cum laude. Danielle Residlo DeWard. Nicole Marie Shuster. Lindsay Renee Watson. And now in interior design, Melissa Ann Bailey, magna cum laude. Maria Greer Belcher, summa cum laude. Shayla Nicole Benzo Summa Cum Laude Ashley Elizabeth Early Magna Cum Laude T 
Tiffany, Lee, Figurski, Magna, Cum Laude, Dawn, Marie, Freeman, Summa, Cum Laude, Caitlin, May, Furby, Nicole, Marie, Hinkle, <laughs> Lindsay, Marie, Ionelli, Magna, Cum Laude, Hunter, Wilson, Lily, Magna, Cum Laude, Valerie, Rose, Roach. <laughs> Ashley Lynn Spanovich. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a hand for our graduates from Design and Merchandising. I would ask the faculty marshal for the Division of Forestry and Natural Resources to bring the bachelor degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all candidates have been recognized. Kevin Michael Anderson, Bachelor's of Science, Wood Science and Technology, and Forest Resource Management. These are the majors from Forest Resource Management. Ryan Cucci. Stephen Earl Evans. Brian Peter Beicht, cum laude. Derek David Ford. Riley Andrew Harold. Aaron. Micah, Holly, Magna, Cum Laude. Austin, Grant, Hull. Glenn, Patrick, Jansen, Jr. Anthony, Lawrence, Juicer. Jennifer Lee Cullick. Hannah Ruth Largen. Edward Anthony Mimonis.
Curtis, Robert, Midaw, Summa, Cum Laude. Lucas, John, Roulette. Andrew, Preston, Schomer. Jeffrey E. Whitlock. Lindsay Marie Wolf. In Reckon Parks, Glenn Allen Wilson, Jr. And now in Wildlife and Fisheries Resources, Kirsten Nicole Brown. Jonathan Ray Busher. Jared Carpenter. Jacob. Tyler Goldner. Braden Kent Harpool. Nathan Tyler Homan. Quinton Lloyd Kale. Matthew Lee Nightel. Jacob Frank Cutternoth. Andrew John Thomas Culp. Danny McFarland. Marie Rose Murray. Davy Michael O'Kernick. Benjamin. Jacob Pokal. Amanda Lee Rennick. Brian Adam Sr. Justin Shank. Thomas Allen Bryson Stark Judson Andrew Swart Seth Michael Taylor Ashley Renee Tenney Magna Cum Laude. John E. P. Wagner. Anthony M. Wynn. And now the graduates in Wood Science and Technology, Casey Arlena Cousins. Daniel Patrick Hovanic, cum laude. Mm -hmm. 
Andrew, Breton, Mac. Kevin, Bennett, Thompson. And now students in Recreation, Parks, and Tourism Resources, James, Roger, Bradbury, cum laude. Adam, Nicholas, Creighton. William, Luke, Finch, cum laude. Ethan, Wayne, Fisher. Brittany, Lynn, Harris. William L. Harris. Jennifer Lynn Highsmith, magna cum laude. George Patrick McGarry, summa cum laude. Nathan Frank. Nedvesky. Elisa Marie Scaglioni. Emily Catherine Smith. Please join me in a hand for all our graduates from the Division of Forestry and Natural Resources. I would ask the faculty marshal for the Division of Plant and Soil Sciences to bring the bachelor degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all candidates have been recognized. Plant Soil Sciences have several majors. First, the agronomy students. Nicholas Mark Caratelli. Courtney Elizabeth Rice. In Applied and Environmental Microbiology, Aaron Maureen Johnson. In Environmental Protection, Ross Andrew Coberly. Ian Sean McCurdy. Morgan Mackenzie McCurdy. Gregory Michael Sims, cum laude. Leah Joe Turjohn. Oh, 
Michael Dana Voss. Please join me in a round of applause for all our graduates from Plant and Soil Science. I would ask the faculty marshal for the Division of Resource Management to bring the bachelor degree candidates forward. Please hold your applause until all candidates have been recognized. in Agribusiness Management and Rural Development, Gordana A. Clevenger. Lisa Cottrell. Kata Fodor. Charles Heath Heil the Fourth Michael Greer Laws Sequoia Lorraine Moore Magna Cum Laude Beth Anna Morgan Michael Timothy Norris. Timothy Wayne Ramsey II. Jody Lynn Rose Cum Laude. Thomas Harry. Schenkel, cum laude. James Joseph Stockman. Brian Sylvester, cum laude. Alexa Jane Talkington. Magna Cum Laude. Sean Patrick Walters. Michelle Leanne Williams, Summa Cum Laude. Tyler Logan Butts. in Agriculture and Extension Education. Caitlin Camille Carica. Trevor Allen Cummings. Laura Elisa Deer Magna Cum Laude. Carly, Joe, Fight, Magna, Cum Laude.
Brittany N. Green. John Wesley Lockhart. Leah Rochelle McIntyre, cum laude. Courtney Ann Mullinex. Joshua Skyland Porto. Lacey Jennifer Sims Magna Cum Laude. Caleb Nathaniel Smith. Andrea Jewel Walker. Michael Blaine Withrow, Kuma Laude. And now in environmental and natural resource economics, Emma Lane. Angela Martinez, Summa Cum Laude. Matthew Turbovich. In landscape architecture, Jacob Ellis Bennett. Dean William Brown. Jacob Andrew Burns. Lee Ann Commerci. Patrick A. Delianibus. Aaron Diedrich. Jonathan William Ernest. Justin Robert Geyer. Lyndon Evan Hall. Ruben Ricardo Herrera. Donovan E. Hallway. Eric Matthew Holly. Curtis Kalaponovich. Patrick Michael Leiden. Cassidy Ireland Maisho Magna Cum Laude. Gregory John Miller Magna Cum Laude. Christina Joette. Reese Patrick J. Sanders Eric John Schutz Chad Edward Smith
Aaron Beth Snyder. Benjamin Mortimer Stout the Fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a hand for all the graduates for the Division of Resource Management. That was great. Congratulations again. I'll ask Provost Michelle Wheatley to come forward to confer your degrees. Will the candidates from the Davis College of Agriculture, Natural Resources and Design please rise? Candidates, in a variety of ways, you have prepared for careers that improve people's quality of life. Whether you focus on producing and distributing societal staples, such as food, wood, or clothing, or on preserving our natural environment and conserving its resources, you will benefit from the knowledge and hands-on experience you have acquired throughout your education here in WVU's most venerable academic unit. As you work to promote a brighter future for all of us, may you maintain your commitment to excellence and your enthusiasm for the world around you. As West Virginia University graduates, always aspire to put your education to work, exploring our world's greatest problems. Continue to cultivate your global awareness and aim to create a more peaceful and just world. Constantly refine your abilities to uncover facts, analyze problems, and communicate clearly. Dream big and never, ever stop learning. Share your pride in West Virginia University wherever you go and act as ambassadors for WVU and the life-changing power of education. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the West Virginia University Board of Governors, I hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights, honor, and privileges appertaining thereto. As West Virginia University's newest graduates, bachelors may move your tassels to the left side of your cap as a symbol of your achievement. Please join me in congratulating our newest graduates. Great, congratulations. We're almost there. Please be seated. We have a few more things to do. After four years, you can wait a few more minutes, right? It's my pleasure now to introduce to you H.R. Uh, Scott, the president of the Davis College Alumni Association, who will deliver a charge to you, our newest alums. H.R. received his BS in biology from Glenville State College and an MS in agricultural economics from here in the Davis College and he is currently working on his PhD in our college as well. HR, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all you do and welcome you to the podium. On behalf of all the graduates of the university who have preceded you, I extend to each member of the class of 2013 congratulations and best wishes. 
Today, you are joining a legacy of success that reaches back almost 150 years. Over that time, WVU graduates have succeeded in almost every field of human endeavor. They have been heroes in the battlefield. They have lifted our spirits through the arts. They have revolutionized technology. They have saved lives. They have committed themselves to public service. They have explored the mysteries of our universe. They have built business enterprises that employ thousands, and they have nurtured society's next generation. The story of each graduate is unique. WVU has given you the tools to succeed, but you must each find your own path to success. With that in mind, I offer this charge to you, the class of 2013. As you enter one phase of your career, start learning what you need to advance to the next stage. When you set your goals, be flexible, and don't be afraid to change your plan if circumstances warrant it. As you work toward your goals, don't forget to spend time nurturing relationships. As you develop unique gifts, apply them in ways that make our world better. When you have to choose between thinking like the crowd or thinking for yourself, choose to be an innovator. When you have the chance to explore a new place or a new perspective, take it. As you travel the world, wear your flying WV with pride. And when people ask you where you learned to succeed, tell them you're a mountaineer. Once again, congratulations to each and every one of you, West Virginia's class of 2013. Thank you. This has been a great celebration. We'll now bring our remarks and our commencement activities to a close. We heard terrific words of encouragement from our commencement speaker, General Jenkins. Saw each of you graduates come forward to receive your hard-earned degrees conferred by Provost Wheatley. And now wish you all very well in your life's journeys and pursuits. General Jenkins reminded us, reminded you folks, that opportunity awaits each of you, but you must each be ready to sort those many opportunities and seize the ones that make best sense. I'm reminded of the, some of the words of wisdom of the great microbiologist Louis Pasteur, for whom pasteurization is named, and some of you I'm sure are familiar with his work, who in 1854 said, and I quote, chance favors the prepared mind. Class of 2013, you are now prepared. Take your chance, pursue your goals and dreams, be aware of the opportunities and needs of people around you, Love, laugh, and explore. Be a lifelong learner. Remember WVU, and be sure to thank the people all around you who have helped you. And don't forget to smile. Let's take a minute now, and let me ask the parents and family and friends, parents and family and friends, who have supported these graduates through many years, to please rise. Parents, family, and friends, please rise. Wait a minute. All right, you beat me to it, and thank them for all they've done. Actually, it seems to me that the parents, family, and friends did a, a louder, more enthusiastic job cheering you on than you've done to thank them. So let's try that again. Graduates, please, enthusiastically. Very good, thank you. We are concluded now. I hope that everyone will join us immediately following this cer ceremony in the adjacent WVU Shell Building as we continue this celebration with drinks, snacks, a chance for conversation, photos, and best wishes.
Before we conclude with the recessional, class of 2013, family, friends, and honored guests and faculty, let's please rise as together we sing our alma mater, composed in 1938. Again, Sarah Nail will help us do that. Following the singing of our alma mater, there will be a recessional. We ask that parents, friends, and families wait until the recessional is complete, and then please come join us in the Shell Building. Let's go Mountaineers. Faculty Marshals, please leave the recession.